They call John Force Superman. They call Warren Johnson the professor. They call Kurt the professor's son. They call Jag the heir apparent to the throne. And they call Jim Yates the former Winston champ. Richie Stevens the kid. And they would all battle for pro stock supremacy in 1999. They would battle for family supremacy at the first race of the season. The brothers Coughlin, Troy, and Jag from the Jags Racing Stable. The first ever All Brothers Pro Stock Final in NHRA history. Troy had problems, Jag had none. Jaggy gets the win and starts out the season as the points leader in the battle to see who can unseat Warren Johnson as the champion. The trophy goes to our whole team and everyone back in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, the whole Jags Mail Order group just did a fabulous job this weekend. Dick Maskin and everyone in Dart, Dart Machinery did a fabulous job too. Uh, our cars were getting quicker with every run and uh, we're getting uh, certainly getting into the 99 season as we should. Yeah, that's not a bad way to start. Race your teammate in the final on the Firebird International Raceway. And Troy makes his second straight final. This time, not his brother, but Kurt Johnson in the other lane. For Troy, the result was the same. Kurt Johnson wins it going away. And how'd you like to beat Troy Coughlin? Two races, two final rounds, He's third in the points behind his brother Jag and KJ that leads the way. Warren Johnson in the fourth place. I got a feeling he shouldn't be counted out with 20 races to go. The next stop, the Mac Tools Gator Nationals. Greg Anderson in the near lane used to work for Warren Johnson. Alan Johnson, no relation to the far side. Watch Alan Johnson's wild ride. One of the most spectacular flips we have ever seen by any class car at an NHRA National Championship event. As amazing as it would seem, the driver gets out of this unheard. We can't say the same for the race car. Alan, that was the wildest ride I've seen anybody taking a long time. You're okay? Yeah, I think I'm okay. Just, just a little sore. Just drove it too far. Wanted to win too bad. He would come back to have a great season in 1999. Warren Johnson on the left side, the aforementioned kid, Richie Stevens, Valspar, Pontiac out of New Orleans on the right side. Looked like he was headed for New Orleans right out of the starting chute. Warren Johnson right down the center of the racetrack, gets the win, sets track record, 686, 201 miles an hour. That's why they call him the man. They also call him the Mac Tools, Gator National. Pro stock champion. <laughs> Got every point there was to have, including number one qualifier and new ET record. On to Texas and the O'Reilly Nationals, where Kurt Johnson, on his third final round appearance, finally gets his first win over Mike Edwards in his first trophy of the year. Edwards would then go to the next race in Texas and go to the finals again, this time against Dad Johnson. WJ in the near lane, Mike Edwards on the far side. Edwards and his Duco sales and service machine would have the best seat in the house to watch Warren's GM Goodwin Service Plus car take his second win in a row and close the gap in the battle for the championship. Now Warren only trails his son Kurt by less than two rounds of competition. Jake Coughlin fell to fifth after not qualifying there and he would not qualify again a week later in Richmond, Virginia. Jake has fallen on tough time. The 200 mile an hour club was filled up in Richmond as Mark Powick recorded his first ever 200 mile an hour blast, as did Richie the Kid Stevens, Jim Yates, Greg Anderson, Troy Coughlin, Alan Johnson, and Mike Thomas. The club is now full. Now the first guy ever to run 200, lest you forget, Warren Johnson, and he has more 200 mile an hour runs to his credit than every other pro stocker combined by a bunch. In pro stock competition, there's Richie Stevens back up against Alan Johnson. Told you the drag racers were a very resilient bunch. His dad Roy watching on, and Alan Johnson coming back from that horrendous crash in Gainesville would take on Richie Stevens in this championship round 
And what a way to rebound for the Mopar Dodge machine as Allen Johnson comes all the way back to get the win. We worked for what, four years now. And everybody busts their hind in the shop. We think sometimes we just, what well, we're doing out here, you know. And gosh, all the hard work's paid off. And hopefully we can do some more this year and give uh, the other two Johnson boys a run for the money for the championship. At the Advanced Auto Parts Southern Nationals in Atlanta, Georgia, Warren Johnson stomping ground. Nothing like trying to beat the professor on his home court. Richie Stevens in the near lane. And once again, Jay Coughlin falling further behind. Failed to make it for the third race in a row. Red light for the kid, Richie Stevens. Another win for the professor, Warren Johnson, who is now less than one round behind his son, Kurt, in the battle for that Winston championship. Kurt, you had him down. You should have taken him out. Jim Yates, third. The kid is fourth. And brother Troy rounds out the top five. We go on to the Mopar Parks Nationals in Englishtown, New Jersey where Jay Coughlin picks up the $50,000 prize in the Holly Pro Stock Dominator Duel. Jeg trying to bounce back. The guy on the other side of the coin, Kurt Johnson, his first DNQ of the year. That would become a theme in Pro Stock. Everyone except the professor DNQ'd at one point or another. Richie Stevens, the kid, coming back from that red light in Atlanta, taking on homeboy Tom Martino in the Century 21 machine on the far side. How good was Stevens? His best reaction time of the weekend. In the final round, he would hold off Tom Martino and get the win. As Stevens wins in front of the Tuesday crowd at Raceway Park, his first win of the season, his third final round in a row. On we go to the Route 66 Nationals in Chicago, where Kurt Johnson spent most of Sunday signing autographs after bowing out round one to John Nobile. The final, Warren Johnson against another one of those Coughlin boys. Brother Troy looking for his first win in his pro stock career. It wouldn't happen today as Warren Johnson, who let one slip away last year, wins it in 99 gave this race away last year just because of our stupidity not even ignorant stupidity so we're just happy to come back and get it finally and uh kurt's camaro it's coming around he just got a little too aggressive our good rent service firebird i think we'll be all right now even the professor can admit when he makes a mistake warren johnson stretches the lead out over his kid richie stevens jim yates and troy coughlin round out the top five Troy's got to be starting to wonder if he's ever going to win one of these. The end of the Pontiac Excitement National presented by Summit Racing out in Ohio. And it's Warren Johnson's white Pontiac again in the other lane. Again, it is one of those Coughlin boys. This time, Jake begin to see a pattern develop. A great rivalry. Warren and Kurt on one side, Jake and Troy on the other. Warren Johnson running seven flat in the heat of the day on this Columbus racetrack. Stops Jagie, keeps them from having a big family celebration in the winner's circle. On we go to Gateway International Raceway, the Sears Craftsman Nationals. And once again, it's Jake Jr. against Warren Johnson. And when's the last time you saw Warren go out in round number one? It had been a long while, but Jaggy sends him packing early. As it turns out, Jag would not make it to the final again. But that Alan Johnson would, looking for his second win on the season. This one under the lights at Gateway. He's got Jim Yates and the Pontiac in the other lane. Yates, a two-time Winston champ, hasn't won on tour since the Winter Nationals of 98. And by the slightest of margins, and on a whole shot, Jim Yates gets his first win in about a year and a half as he takes the championship at Gateway Raceway. After 11 races, midway through the season, Warren Johnson by a bunch. Curtis second, and look at Jim Yates, quietly slipping, 
up to the number three spot. Yes! Hey, these guys are great. They are great. Close, you inspired man. me, dude. Close, close. You're not so bad yourself, Jim. Mopar Park's Mile High Nationals. Jack Coughlin beat his brother Troy in the final, just like they did at the non-points race in Bristol a couple of weeks earlier. The Jags boys really getting on a roll. Jim Yates ain't doing too badly in the middle part of the season either. In the semifinals up in Seattle, he would take on Warren Johnson. WJ in the far side, and Yates coming off that big win. Looking to pick up his second win in about three races. He takes out WJ, goes to the championship round, and would then meet Kurt Johnson for all the marbles at the prolonged Super Loop against Nationals. Kurt Johnson struggled in the middle of the season, but the AC Delco Chevrolet is back on track, and he was more than ready to uphold the Johnson family honor against Yates in the final. And for Kurt Johnson, after the DNQ in English Town, I guess you could say the comeback is complete. He's back in the winner's circle. Warren still leading by a bunch. The rest of the guys still on the chase. Jim Yates has really picked up the pace in the chase and at the Autolite Nationals in Sonoma, California. He would square off in another final with Kurt Johnson. Second race in a row. These two went at it for all the cash. Yates in the far lane. KJ to the near lane. KJ looking to go back to back, but it wouldn't happen this time. He had problems, and Jim Yates all of a sudden puts his helmet right in the battle for his third Winston Championship. I tell you, I love California, and I love Simone, Sonoma. You know, the Split Fire Peak crew has done such a good job today, and uh, just had a great day. Kurt started off ahead of the pack, but these guys kept chipping away until they beat him in the final. And on we go to Brainerd, Minnesota in the Colonel's Truck Accessories Nationals. It's another Jag Johnson final round. Coughlin, who finished number two in the points last year, desperately needs the points if he wants to close the gap on Kurt and catch Warren. He gets some of those points right here. And Boone Bragan writes as he takes out the professor in the finals. We've uh, visited the winner's circle several times and uh, missed a couple good opportunities along the way too. But, uh, you know, our whole crew has been working extremely hard. Today is extremely evident of that. Uh, my dad, Jeg, Dick Maskin, Gary Pierman, Craig Hankinson, the whole Jegs team just uh, really uh, just gelled extremely well this weekend. And, uh, again, I think... This isn't the last of us this year, 99. Jaggy has a long way to go if he wants to be the Winston champ, but he is steadily and slowly and consistently climbing up the points ladder. Nice job. Indianapolis and the U.S. Nationals would be the next stop on the NHRA Winston Tour. Greg Anderson, we talked about him earlier, used to work for Warren Johnson. How about this? The final round of the biggest race of the year and Greg Anderson, the pupil, in the final round against the professor. Warren Johnson driving his Superman car for the first time this season, and since the time they unloaded it, he looked like Superman. For Greg Anderson, there was no grip tonight as Warren picks up yet another U.S. Nationals title. Indy, I mean, it's special to everybody, and I, I really appreciate running Greg in the final because the fact that he's worked so hard to get to this point, and we're still the best of buddies. Yeah, Warren, you're buddies because you won, but if you'd have lost, it might be a different story. The trail heads on to Redding, Pennsylvania, and the true value, Keystone Nationals. Let's take a look back in qualifying. Bob Perry on the far side, Ron Krischer here in the near lane. The story of this race happens after the finish line. Bob Perry gets sideways across in front of Grisher and hard into the wall. Ron doing a little defensive driving out there, trying to keep from getting his Pontiac torn up at the incident. Both drivers were unhurt.
the finals, a pair of mail order Ohio based cars. The Jags car against Mark Powell. Powell has it won since 95. Almost stole it on the line, but ran out of juice at the top end. And Jay Coffin wins for the fourth time in 1999, his best season as a pro. On we go to Heartland Park, Topeka. And Mike Edwards, for the first time anyone can remember, wins pro stock from the number 16 qualifying spot. They've announced Mary Lou Kite selling the team and they won't be back. They're going to go out in a flash of glory. Mike Edwards, who joined Warren Johnson, Kurt Johnson, and Jim Yates is the only guys to win a pro stock race for each of the last four years, would double up. We stopped in at the AutoZone Nationals in Memphis. Under the lights, he took out Richie Stevens in another great NHRA pro stock final. Even though Warren wasn't around for the final round, he's got a cushy, comfy lead at the top of the pack. The real battle now looks to be for that number two position. Mike Edwards, the first time in his long career that he's won back-to-back -back pro stock races, and they were celebrating. The O'Reilly Fall Nationals back in Dallas. Warren Johnson trying to clinch. All he has to do is win the race, set the record, qualify number one, and have Kurt lose in the first round. Piece of cake. Step one, a new national record at 682 in the number one qualifying spot. And then when son Kurt was upset in round number one, began to look like Warren Johnson just might be able to wrap things up here in the big D. Warren, still flying the Superman colors, was going to take on Jim Yates. And on this day, Jim Yates would have no grip today. Johnson for the fifth time is the Winston champion. I'm absolutely proud of this Good Ranch Service plus Firebird team. We did everything right for change this weekend. Come on, you've been doing everything right for a while. If I did everything right for a while, I would have won all the races. <laughs> and the way he works, maybe one of these years, he will win the ball. Warren Johnson, your 1999 Winston Pro Stock champion. We went down the road to the Matco Tools Super Nationals in Houston, and Ricky Smith, for the first time in a long while, picks up the win, taking out Tom Martino in the championship round. That took us back to the starting point. Pomona for the Auto Club of Southern California finals. And in the finals, Warren Johnson and Jeg Coughlin. Jeg, who had wrapped up second place in the points, passing Kurt earlier on this day, was going to get one last trophy this year. Saw Warren's car moving around a little bit. Jaggy doesn't care. He gets the trophy. He won the first one and won the last one. My hat's off to the whole Jags team. Uh, we've just had one phenomenal year. Today we uh, snuck by Kurt for number two in the points, and uh, that was our main goal here, other than to win the race, obviously. And uh, you know, 99's been a great year. We're already looking forward to 2000. Warren Johnson wins it going away. Tip of the cap to Jake for that great late season charge. KJ. Jim Yates and the kid, Richie Stevens, wrap up the top five in 1999 Pro Stock Car.